What's up, guys? Brett Apple here from DailyFanMMA.com. Back at you with another UFC Quick Picks video here on the Mayo Media Network. First things first, make sure you're subscribed to the channel, guys. A lot of great content coming throughout the week, multiple sports. Uh, for MMA, we do have the Dogger Pass podcast, as usual. Paul Shaughnessy, Cody Saptic, those guys do a great job. As always, that shows out right now, so make sure you check it out if you have not. Come back here for some UFC Quick Picks. Going to give you my cash game play, tournament play, salary play, and my fade of the week. And we're coming off uh, a pretty great week in Santos versus Teixeira. Last event gave out Darren Elkins as my cash game play. He smashed. He ended up on the optimal lineup. Alexander Romanov was my tournament play. He ended up on the optimal lineup. Teixeira was my salary play. He ended up on the optimal lineup, and my fate of the week, Tanner Bozer, lost. So we're looking to uh, bring things back here with another um, successful four-pick segment. So let's get right to it with my cash game play of the week. All right, my cash game play this week is Rafael Dos Anjos at 8.8K. He is the main event favorite here, minus 190 over Paul Felder at plus 165. And look, Dos Anjos, uh, one of the big reasons he's favored in this main event is because he's prepped for this main event. He was supposed to fight Islam Makachev here in a five-round main event, but Makachev pulled out, and Paul Felder was supposed to be on the broadcast commentary team. And, and Felder's stepping in on less than one week's notice. I've heard he's swimming a lot. I've heard he's running a lot. I'm sure he's in good shape, but ultimately, he is semi-retired. He was not prepared for a five-round fight. He is not sparring every day. And Dos Anjos is prepared for a five-round main event. So uh, that's definitely baked into the line here. And ultimately, I just feel comfortable targeting the main event as often as possible in my cash games. Those 25 minutes, uh, the extra 10 minutes on top of a traditional fight, um, give you such a higher floor and ceiling. And Dos Anjos has multiple ways to score. He's not a bad striker. He's obviously very, very experienced. He lands 3.47 significant strikes per minute, also averages 1.82 takedowns per 15 minutes. I don't know that this is an, an, a super easy matchup for him, but Felder is not like Dos Anjos' uh, previous opponents, like a Colby Covington, a Kamaru Usman, a Leon Edwards, Michael Chiesa. Guys who are going to push the wrestling against him. Felder doesn't really wrestle, so... I expect Felder to play his traditional low-volume, slow-paced uh, Muay Thai game, and Dos Anjos is going to be the one who will be mixing it up with his wrestling. And over the course of 25 minutes, um, you know, we're not even necessarily looking for Dos Anjos to, to smash to win inside the distance because Paul Felder is very, very tough, and I don't think a finish is super likely here. But in 25 minutes of action, can Dos Anjos land a few takedowns? Can he land enough significant strikes to score 85, 90 points on DraftKings? I think so. At 8.8K, as the main event favorite here, again, minus 190 to beat Paul Felder. And he's plus 258 inside the distance. That's not a terrible metric either. Um, very experienced, solid wrestler, grappler, main event favorite, safe floor, high ceiling. He's my cash game play at 8.8K. All right, next up, my favorite tournament play of the week. And and honestly, truly, I want to give out Abdul Razak Al-Hassan here at 9.1K because he is my favorite tournament option. Uh, all 10 of his pro wins are by first round knockout. He's got a great inside distance line. I think he's going to be very popular. And with the loss of Julian Marquez on this slate, um, I feel a little bit guilty giving that one out. So I'll pivot here and I'll say my favorite tournament play is Don Tail Mays at 9K, and this is a much more risky play, okay? This is not a lock by any stretch, but I'm really intrigued by the size advantages Mays has over his opponent, Rock Martinez. Uh, Mays is minus 240, Martinez plus 200. Guys, it's a very low-level heavyweight fight, okay? Neither of these fighters are very skilled, but... Mays is six foot six and Martinez is five foot ten. And Mays has an eighty-one inch reach and Martinez has a seventy-two inch reach. So Mays is gonna be eight inches taller than Martinez with a nine inch reach advantage. And he's arguably the superior striker, especially at range with his kicks, more athletic. He's not necessarily a knockout artist, but he's gonna be so much bigger than Martinez, and he's gonna be trying to hurt him. So I think there is, the, uh, you know, a low-level heavyweight fight. These guys have holes in their games. Um, 
I think Mar- I think Mays has a decent chance to win this fight by knockout. It's no guarantee, but he's plus 135 inside the distance. That's a pretty strong number, and he's not going to be um, as popular as you might think because he's priced between Dos Anjos and Al Hassan, uh, who are going to be both very popular. So uh, my favorite tournament play of the week, Dante Mays, big size advantage in a low-level heavyweight fight. Think he's got potential for an early knockout. Not a lock by any stretch, but we're always looking for upside here in tournaments at 9K. Mays has got it. My tournament play of the week. All right, let's move on to my favorite salary saving play of the week. And again, this one was quite difficult for me because I literally think nearly every fighter below the mid range is live. I- I'm expecting many underdogs to win on this card. Um, three, four, five. I just think pretty much every underdog is live, and I don't think there's one obvious standout play by any stretch. So I'm just going to give you one of the names that I like. Jose Canones at 7.8K definitely intrigues me. Facing Luis Smolka as the underdog. Canones is plus 130 here. Smolka minus 150. Um, What I like about Canones is that he's facing an opponent in Smolka who's very defensively liable. Smolka does not defend takedowns well, 30% takedown defense, and he doesn't defend strikes well either, 52%. So um, basically opponents can do whatever they want to Smolka, and that's why nearly all of Smolka's fights have produced big scores one way or the other. Um, he's been taken down you know, 10 plus times by Tim Elliott, given up 15 advances to Ray Borg. That's not a real number, but he's given up many, many takedowns, many advances. He was knocked down three times by Mateus Nicolau. And then his recent fights, submission loss to Matt Schnell, submission loss to Casey Kenny. Um, His defense is not very strong. So this is much less about, I believe in the skill set of Canones, and I think he's some technical talent, and I think he's absolutely going to beat Smolka, rather than... um, when Smolka wins, I think he has. I think he's capable of producing a high score because Smolka is so defensively liable. So Canonis uh, is going to be able to land takedowns. He averages two point five eight takedowns per fifteen minutes. I think he's going to attack with his wrestling, and based on Smolka's questionable defense, I think he's going to have success. That doesn't mean he wins the fight, but I do think there's potential for him to earn top position time here. Uh, land a few takedowns over 15 minutes, maybe get a couple of advances, and even on the feet, he he's no he's no um, you know he's coming off a knockout loss to Sean O'Malley. Canonis is not a great boxer, but he averages 3.41 significant strikes per minute, only absorbs 2.58, 66% defense. He's more defensively sound than Smolka, so there's some potential for a knockdown there as well. The bottom line is uh, I, I never trust Luis Smolka. Um, as a favorite because he lacks defense and yet he's coming up he's coming off a win over Ryan McDonald uh, he's coming off a loss technically but his last win was over Ryan McDonald prior to that Sumu Dierji these are not great talents I think Canonas is a little bit of a step up above him above those guys so 7.8k Canonas I think he has a real shot to win here especially because I think he can land takedowns earn top position and 7.8k at a fairly low ownership I would expect I think he's a solid option to save some salary in what should be a high-paced matchup um Jose Canona, 7.8K, my salary saving play of the week. Finally, let's move on to my fade of the week, and I'm going with Miranda Granger here at 8.2K. Um, and this was another tough one for me, but Granger's up to minus 170 in spots, and she's only 8.2K. So she's technically a solid value on this slate, and I just don't buy it at all. Um, I actually think Ashley Yoder should be the favorite in this spot. Granger is, is, has not proven anything yet to me. Uh, she's won one fight in the UFC, a decision over Hannah Goldie, and then her most recent fight is a loss, submission loss to Amanda Lemos. And Granger is 7-1 and one professionally, and I think five of her seven wins have come by submission, but they're not traditional, I'm going to take you down, mount you, take your back, rear naked choke type submissions. You got standing guillotines, you got arm bars off your back. These are very questionable submissions, and I really don't think she's a very good wrestler and grappler, and you look at her UFC debut where she won, she didn't attempt a single takedown. Um, 
that's a real red flag for me when you have a fighter who mostly wins by submission but doesn't actually want to or try to wrestle or grapple and is probably not even that great at it. And then again, in her most recent fight, she was taken down uh, pretty much immediately, gave up her back, was choked unconscious. So I'm really not buying into this idea that Granger's any special wrestler or grappler. And so can she beat Ashley Yoder on the feet? Sure, she can. She's a adequate striker, I suppose, from range. But um, Yoder's far more experienced. I think Yoder can compete with her there. And Yoder's a brown belt in jiu-jitsu. So I really think Yoder has advantages on the ground here in terms of wrestling, in terms of submission grappling. Maybe she doesn't dominate the fight because Yoder's no special talent either. But I do think her advantages should lead her to winning some ground exchanges and potentially even dominating on the mat. Um, But 8.2K for Granger, there's just no reason for me to pay that price at all even as a value play at minus 170 i just don't trust her to wrestle don't trust her to grapple really don't trust her to land a high number of significant strikes here so she needs a finish she's plus 500 inside the distance unless she locks up another standing guillotine choke i do not see her ending up on optimal lineups this week yoder's never been submitted so easy fade for me on miranda granger at 8.2k That's going to do it, guys, for this week's UFC Quick Picks. Thank you again for the support. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel. Helps us out a lot. DailyFanMMA.com is my website. If you want full DraftKings breakdowns, projections, rankings, podcasts, uh, more betting content, we got all the stuff you want coming off a uh, probably our best week of the year. Um, You can follow me on Twitter, Brett Apley, double T, double P. Again, thank you. Enjoy the picks. Best of luck in your contest this week, guys. Let me know who your favorite play is in the comments section below. Talk to you soon. Peace.